buses, the most convenient form of transportation for humans and for other things. Have you ever taken the bus at night? Did you ever notice that the people around you suddenly disappear, but the bus never stopped? Or have you seen a man without a face, a ghost waiting at a bus stop in the middle of the night? Regardless, let's take a look at these three stories of haunting bus experiences. Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, because this time, we're going to be driving to your stop. Ghost on the Bus I thought I would share another experience with you all. This was not long ago, 2008. I had been helping to look after my aunt, who was recovering from an operation. I was also in the middle of moving houses and working full time, so as you can imagine, I was extremely busy. I distinctly remember that it was a Friday, with the weekend off. I had just left work and was going over to a friend's house for a couple of days before going back to my aunt's flat. I got on the bus in Rotherham Town Center Interchange, not really taking much notice of anyone or anything. I had enough on my mind at that time. The bus was filling up, but not overcrowded. The bus set off on its own way out of town. A couple of minutes into the journey, I had one of my strange feelings that I can't explain it. It's just, you know something's not quite right, nor as it should be. I started looking around the bus at various people to see where the vibe was coming from. Then I saw a man, a man that I recognized from where I used to live a few years ago. Something wasn't right about him. He looked agitated. Then he turned to me and looked me straight in the eye. I got a cold shiver that went right through me and knew that something odd was happening or about to happen. Feeling uncomfortable, I turned away from him and stared out the window for a while. When I looked back a little while later, he was gone. Must have gone off at a stop. <sighs> he really creeped me out with that stare. I went about my business as usual. Later, I got to my aunt's house. After a while we were talking, she, she said that she had been reading the local newspaper and the obituary page. Poor old Johnny, she said. I knew what she was going to say, but let her finish. It was his funeral Friday, which was the day that I saw him on the bus. A week or so later, I saw him again when I was traveling through to my friend's house. Jeepney Ride It's funny, when certain events in our lives occur and we blame it all to bad luck. What's funnier is the things that we do counter the flow of bad energy that causes these so-called bad luck or bad events. At least, at that time I thought it was funny until my friend shared her unlikely experience. This story is about my friend and her scary jeepney ride going home. For those of you who don't know what jeepneys are, they're a popular means of public transportation in the Philippines. They were originally made from the US military jeeps left over from World War II, and are well known for their flamboyant decorations and crowded seating. My friend went home late after finishing their school project. Since 
She lives within the vicinity of the campus. It was perfectly safe for her to take the jeepney instead of taking a taxi and going home during late hours. It was about midnight when she took the ride home, and she could not help but notice the driver kept glancing at her through his rearview mirror, and then he would turn to her. Now all jeepneys have their own route and do not take any turns and they have to stick to their route or else there is a big chance that they would run into some cop trouble. What's odd about this jeepney ride besides the eerie glances that the driver gave from time to time, he was also taking turns in corners that he was not supposed to. Afraid of what the driver's plans were, she, she was more afraid of her surroundings because it seemed as if she was in the middle of nowhere already. So instead of going down, she just stayed on the jeep. On the last turn that driver made, she noticed that they were back on the route that they were supposed to be in the first place before reaching the end of the terminal. The driver turned to my friend and said, I'm sorry if I scared you or startled you. It was not my intention. Could you please do me a favor and burn all your clothes when you get home? Wondering why, my friend asked why he was acting very strange. The driver explained. The reason why I kept glancing was because your head was not attached to your body when I looked through the rearview mirror. That is why I changed my route a while ago, hoping we could get away from the bad energy present in that area. And that's why I want you to burn your clothes when you get home because I think it's still with you. Upon arriving home, still shaking from fear, my friend took all of her clothes off and burned them as quickly as she could. A few days later, she found out on the news that the jeepney driver died a day after the incident. It turned out the warning was not for her, but for the driver. Waiting for the bus. My story takes place three years ago in the town of Bethany, Connecticut. I lived in this town for three years before I moved to upstate New York for college. It is an extremely small rural town with lots of farmland, trails, and livestock. Horseback riding is very common. You see people riding every day. I loved living there, even if it was kind of out of the way. In high school, I met my girlfriend, who lived three towns over in Milford, Connecticut, a 30-minute drive from my small town of Bethany. One night in early autumn, we were over my house for dinner. We sat and watched a movie. And then it was time to take her home. I was only 18, she was 17. She wasn't allowed to sleep over. It was about 10.45 at night. And she and I crammed into my little Mazda sedan and we take off. In Bethany, there are no streetlights. So the roads are very dark. We drove about two miles out and my girlfriend begins to panic because she left her cell phone over at my place. Frustrated, I decided to turn around and head back to get it. I took a left down a road called Old Mill Road. Across from this road is a large concrete manufacturing plant. The road is about 100 yards long and is a dead end. A gated off trail is at the very end where people would horseback ride. However, about halfway down the road, Another road branches off from Old Mill, which leads to residential homes. It is pitch black out, and I drive slowly with my high beams on.
Our car starts to approach the end of the road. When we see two people standing near the gate. I switched the low beams as I didn't want to blind them. My girlfriend said something like, what are they doing? I started to make a K-turn to turn around. I put the car in reverse, turning on the white reverse lights. As I back up, my girlfriend said, watch out for those people. I looked out my rear window to see the two people. It was a man and a little girl, maybe about seven years old. He was wearing jeans and an orange shirt. His skin was darker, possibly Hispanic. He was holding hands with the young girl who wore a pink shirt and had a small pink backpack. It looked as if they were waiting for the school bus, but it was 11 p.m. at night. I then said, they better move out of the way, I gotta back up. It was a narrow road. I backed up towards them until they were only a feet away from my rear bumper. They never even moved. Most parents who see a car backing up towards their child would, would have shuffled them out of the way. They just stood there. My girlfriend who babysat said, Jeez, way to protect your kid. Almost backed into them. I sat back in my seat and glanced in my rear view mirror to see the man and the girl illuminated by the reverse lights. They didn't have faces. From their shoulders up was fuzzy and transparent, with just the outline of their heads. I could see straight through to the forest behind them. I then got that awful feeling of horror mixed with dread and sadness. I just stared at them. I pulled the car in drive and slowly pulled away, watching them disappear into the darkness. I didn't say a word. In my mind, I was panicking. What did I just see? My girlfriend then said, that was so weird. What was he doing out there with his daughter at this hour with no flashlight? That was so dangerous. I then said as calmly as I could manage, Baby, they didn't have faces. I was almost in tears. I've never had an experience like this before. She then started saying that I was scaring her and she didn't know what I was talking about. I then pieced it all together. A man and a little girl waiting for the bus at 11 o'clock at night. It's pitch blackout. We almost backed into them and they didn't move out of the way. And to top it all off, they had nothing from the shoulders up. They were ghosts. Like I said, I've never had an experience like that. You say to yourself that it's just a ghost. I, I'm a strong 18 year old kid with big muscles. I am not afraid of anything, but I will admit I was scared. My girlfriend ended up sleeping over at my house that night, and I'm thankful for the experience, as scary as it may have been, as it confirmed my belief in spirits and make a great, true story to tell my kids someday.